Hey everyone, welcome to the Flutter development series from Roman Just Codes, where I'll be developing beautiful user interfaces with Flutter. And in this video, I'll be preparing the assets for this app prior to publishing, with a focus on the launch icons and launch screens for both iOS and Android. In this series, I've been building the UI for a fictional grocery and produce app. And for this episode, I'll be covering the creating of the launch icons and launch screens for iOS and Android while showing you tips and the tools on how to generate them easier, giving your apps a polished look. This is what we'll be tackling in this video. We'll replace the default launch icons that Flutter generates for us when creating a new Flutter project, as well as adding a launch screen so as to replace this brief bland screen that pops up before our app gets initialized. These small touches improve your app's look and feel, while at the same time giving the polished and legit look they deserve. This should be a very straightforward video, so let's get started. To accomplish all of this, I should have all the required images for both launch screens and launch icons for both platforms. Luckily for us, all we need is a single image from which all of the different image sizes will be generated for us. Isn't that nice? We'll start with an image representative of the app's logo, or what we want our users to see on their screens when launching our app. Save it with the name icon.png. You can name it anything you want, just make sure to be consistent with the naming. Create it as a PNG and 1024 by 1024 pixels in dimension. Proceed to create a subfolder under the assets folder of your project, called icons. Drag the generated PNG into this folder. Go to the pubspec.yaml and import the required package as well as adding the configuration to generate all launch icons. The package is called flutter underscore launcher underscore icons. Add the latest available version. Add the configuration required by this package. Create a root section in this yaml called flutter underscore icons. Add underneath it the following options. Android true, iOS true, and for image underscore path, add the path to the newly added icon image, in our case, assets, icons, icon.png. The package will find this image, grab it, and generate all launch icons accordingly. Save the YAML file so the package gets installed. All that's left for us to do is execute the tool by running the following command in the terminal. Hit enter. Let's verify that the icons are generated correctly. For Android, you can navigate to Android, App, Source, Main, Res, and under each of the device DPI folders, you will find an IC underscore launcher.png image generated by the tool. For iOS, you can view the generated images by launching Xcode and opening the runner project in navigating to the runner assets.exe assets file and selecting the app icon option. There, you will see all the corresponding images for all your supported devices and even for the app store. Let's rerun the application to get the icon to update appropriately. And indeed, the icon updates upon reloading the application after running the tool. Let's do the same for the Android version of our app. There's our updated icon as well. I believe we are all set as far as launch icons. Now let's take care of this brief bland screen that gets shown before initializing our app. Let's start with the iOS launch image. We'll go back again to the iOS runner project for this app. In the assets file, right under the app icon option, there's the launch image option, select it. You'll see three placeholders for three image sizes, 1x, 2x, and 3x. Each represents the different resolution sizes supported by iOS. Make sure to have your three images ready, the original size, 
twice the original, three times the original. I'll add them to my project just to keep them handy, but this is optional. I'll create a folder called iOS launch screens and add these three images inside. Drag each image into their corresponding slot. Notice we're supporting Universal by default. I'd rather just target a single device for now, in my case just iPhone, so check only that one. I'll drop the same images there. After adding my images, I'll reload the app to reflect the changes on my iOS app. You saw the launch image display for a brief moment, right before our custom splash screen. I almost nailed it as far as sizing it so it matches the location of the splash screen logo. Relaunching, looking real nice. Let's proceed now with the Android version. This one is a bit more involved, where I have to generate multiple images for each of the supported device pixel densities, as well as the background color for the launch image, since it is generated natively. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Just like in the launch icons case, I'll create a separate image for the launch screen, but just the center image. You will need five images, each of which corresponding to the supported device pixel densities. Look for links in the description regarding supporting different pixel densities on Android. You can even use one for all of them. It all depends on your specific needs. I'm supporting larger phones, so I'll use a larger 300 by 300 PNG version of the same image. All images in each of the separate folders must have the same name. I'm calling them launcher underscore icon. I'll also add it to my project under a folder called Android underscore launch screens, just to keep it handy as well. Now, add the launcher icon image to each of the supported DPI folders inside the resources folder of the Android version. Once the images are in place, create an XML inside the values subfolder inside the resources folder. Call it colors.xml. Drop this little XML structure and now let me break it down for you. This XML is how you define values for resources used by the system. In my case, a color value that the launch screen utility will use to paint the screen with a color. I'll use my app main color for that. You have two colors, one called IC Launcher Background. This is if your main logo image supports transparency and you want to add a background color to it. I don't need it, but just to show you how you can use the values that come out of the box for you. Then I add my own custom color value, which I'll call Splash. I'll put the same value. Later, I'll be looking for this value in another resource file. You'll see. Next, go to the drawable folder inside the resources folder and you will see an XML called launch background.xml. Now you see where I'm going? Android requires all these configurations to be provided in the form of an XML, so that's exactly what we're doing. Make the following changes. Add an item of type Android colon drawable, which points to the value inside the colors.xml that I defined as splash. This is how you refer to it. This will paint the screen with that color. Then add another item type bitmap and the source will be the corresponding image named launcher icon inside the mipmap folder corresponding to the pixel density of the device in which I'm running this app. If I run it on a medium density pixel device, it will pull the one from mipmap-mdpi. If it's a high density pixel device, it will pull it from mipmap-hdpi and so on. I'll also copy paste these modifications to this other folder called Drawable V21, which corresponds to devices supporting Android API level 21 and above. This way I'm supporting a larger number of device configurations. Let's run the Android version of the app. And there it is. No more blank screens to stare at, 
Instead, we've branded that piece with our logo and color. Neat. Both logo and launch screen are in place and our app is one step closer from being publish ready. And here they are, side by side, both iOS and Android apps with their launcher icons in place, as well as a sleek, clean and minimalist launch screen to delight your users. In the next video, I'll show you the process of how to publish your app for the Google Play Store with the minimal requirements in place to get you across the finish line. Then in another video, I'll do the same for the iOS App Store and I'll demonstrate the prerequisites needed for both platforms. Well, almost there folks, so stay tuned for these videos. With that, thank you for watching. See you on the next one. That's it for this video, so please stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated and please like this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching.